I greet you with joy on this summer morning. My name is Jim Lapp. I have titled my devotional this morning, Musings on Aging. Now my birth certificate tells me that I am old. Now I've known that for some time, but mostly I've not considered that I'm old. That may seem strange to say since I live in a retirement community with peers who seem to age at the same pace as I do. To, o to own that I am old at 85 is a challenge for me. I like to drive the car like I did 30 years ago and to eat like I'm still young. I try to stay active with walking a few miles each day. But then there's reminders that I'm getting old. The eye doctor says I have glaucoma. The ear doctor says that hearing loss is normal to aging. And then the heart doctor treats me like I'm old. And the wellness checkup each year reminds me that my memory is not as sharp as it used to be. Now, getting old is kind of tricky. I read some years ago that some people die at 20 but aren't buried until they're 70. They die because they refuse to grow or dream or change in their thinking and activity. I've tried to avoid that kind of death, but sooner or later, I've had to admit that I'm now counted among the old. But listen to this, when I get a senior discount, I'm delighted to be numbered among the old. Or when I'm treated with respect and patience, I'm glad for the consideration of the old. I can even use my age to rationalize why I'm late to a meeting or even forget the meeting at altogether. But in my mind and self, it has been a challenge to think of being old. A common temptation for those of us who are aging is to think we no longer matter to others and that life has somehow passed us by. An older man in the Psalm 77 by the name of Asaph cries out to God with feelings of being forgotten. He says, I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. I commune with my heart in the night. I meditate and search my spirit. Will the Lord spurn me forever? and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love ceased forever? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious to me? Yes, it's not uncommon to have thoughts like Asaph and convince ourselves that we're forgotten, put on the side of life to watch the actions of others, to gaze longingly at uh, those people who now carry responsibilities we once carried in life, to feel like we're forgotten even by God. Then Asaph seems to get a hold of himself, and he sees this on one good antidote to this kind of depressive thinking. He says, I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your, that is God's wonders of old. So when I'm tempted to feel the feelings of that life is somehow passing by me, I need to remember the opportunities that came to me beyond my expectations in my former pastoring or church leadership. I wonder where your mind goes when you think of the blessings in your life which came perhaps unexpectedly and for which you felt unprepared. Or remember all the miles on the highway and the safety we enjoy or the flights we have without mishap. When and, when and how has God protected and cared for you over these years? Even I feel that protection. Sometimes I need a self-correct when I succumb to discouragement in my old age and fail to recall all the goodness of God's mercy and grace and the many gifts I've received beyond what I ever deserved. What comes to mind for you when you're tempted to feel forgotten by God and others? Now there's another description in the Bible that's good for us in our old age to recall. Hear these words from Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. As for me, I'm already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who long for his appearing. Is it possible that instead of depression, we can hold gratitude for the life we've lived 
and anticipate receiving the blessing of God on our lives. Somehow, as Paul sensed he was near death, he had satisfaction about the life he'd lived. He was not perfect, but he faces death without dwelling on the violence he committed against the Christians, the followers of Jesus. Rather, he reflects the hope that the same Christ that met him on the Damascus Road would now greet him lovingly in eternity. I expect Paul had some satisfaction in knowing that under his leadership, the church had broadened from a mono-Jewish culture to include Gentiles, of whom most of us are a part. As I reflect on my own life, I can give thanks for divine guidance that surprised me along the way. I followed a path that I never envisioned living, an experience fulfillment I did not imagine. Can some of you also see divine guidance for a life that you had not anticipated in your youth? Getting old can be a season of deep gratitude and joy and seeing how God has used us with all of our shortcomings. And with Paul, we can anticipate the next great transition into God's presence. Some time ago, a spiritual director reminded me that aging is not something to resist, but to accept as a part of the cycle of life. At times, I found myself fighting getting old. No matter what the birth certificate said, I did not want to acknowledge this reality. It was like I told myself if I just ignore getting old, it will go away and I can just go on living. I feared letting go of life as I've known it and lacked faith to tr entrust myself to God's care and keeping. Now, as I muse about th aging, I think of the legacy I wish to leave my children and grandchildren. So this year I'm writing a personal letter to each grandchild on their birthday to express my gratitude for them and to affirm their gifts for the good of this world. With my ministry years now limited, I wish to support new and younger leaders with my prayers and encouragement. I also wish to keep stretching my mind and my heart by exploring the serious questions of faith and life that still tantalize my brain. I want to enjoy the beauty of this world in ways that I might have missed when I was so active that beauty was made secondary. On a clear night, I want to continue to go out into the darkness and to look into the heavens and re remember words like those from Psalm 8, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Or the words from Psalm 121, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Or perhaps these precious words from Paul in Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of God? I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. May we all live into, with confident hope, that glorious love that God has for us now and for eternity. Please pray with me. Our ageless, sovereign God, attend us with mercy and grace and hope as we live into our aging in this life. Let there be gratitude, joy, and peace for us in this stage of living. Amen.